So in this video, we're going to look at what happens um, to the solubility of a compound um, when we change the pH. So um, pH will affect the solubility if the compound that you're trying to dissolve is either an acid or a base. So if your compound is either an acid or a base, meaning it's going to react with the water and form acid or base, then the pH um, of the solution is going to affect the solubility of that compound because now you have two competing effects. You have not only the solubility, but you also have the fact that there are common ions in solution. So in this case, the common ions are either going to be OH- minus or H3O+. Plus. And these vary in concentration with pH. So that's why we have a effect of uh, pH on solubility because the common ions um, are going to be OH minus or H3O plus. Another possibility is that um, your salt will react with OH minus or H3O plus. And so this would this is gonna this could affect the solubility through Le Chatelier's principle. So let's look at um, let's look at one example of where this might be the case. So if you have, for example, calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate solid is a weakly soluble salt. It makes calcium 2 plus plus uh, the carbonate anion in solution. So um, when this dissolves, the calcium 2 plus, that's pretty much just calcium. So that's that's a neutral compound. But carbonate is a weak base. So we identify carbonate as a weak base. So let's say that we were to just do this in neutral water. Well, if we were to just do this in neutral water, the carbonate would go into the water, it would react with the water and make a, the, the water slightly basic. Um, it would pull protons off of the water and make it uh, slightly basic. But what's interesting is, is what if we were to take this solution? So let's say that we were to put calcium carbonate into water and we were to just kind of have some calcium carbonate at the bottom and some calcium carbonate in solution. Well, what would happen if I added some HCl to this? So we know from metathesis reactions that HCl plus carbonate gives H2O plus CO2 gas. So by adding in that HCl, we're essentially we're removing carbonate from solution because the carbonate is going away as carbon dioxide gas. What would happen to the solution is we would start to develop bubbles of carbon dioxide. So if this were the case, what would happen is adding HCl um, will decrease the concentration of carbonate because it is um, reacting as a, uh, it is reacting to make CO2 gas, and this is going to cause the reaction to shift to the right. So what will actually happen here is we'll actually get an increase in solubility because the reaction gets drawn to the right upon adding HCl. Since as the carbonate goes away, as the carbonate gets used up, the uh, calcium carbonate is going to dissolve more to make more uh, carbonate in solution, so the whole thing shifts to the right. So this is what we're getting at with the effect of pH on solubility. Now, in all honesty, this would be difficult to calculate. So to do, to estimate the concentration of the calcium 2 plus or the solubility in this in this reaction is relatively complicated however we're going to look at a more simple example where we have a direct ion a common ion effect um, the ph changes the concentration of hydroxide which is directly related to the the solubility of the compound of a hydroxide salt in this problem, uh, we, we're going to take a look at what happens to the solubility of iron hydroxide as we change the pH. So let's kind of think about this conceptually first before we actually do any math. So iron hydroxide, when it dissolves, um, we're going to start our problem like we normally do. Uh, it's going to make iron 3 plus uh, plus 3 OH minus. And the KSP for this is going to equal the concentration of iron 3 plus times the concentration of OH minus cubed. 
So now let's ask ourselves what will happen as we change the pH. So should iron hydroxide be more soluble in acidic or basic conditions? So the common ion here that we have to identify is going to be OH minus. So to increase the solubility, what we want to do is we want to have the lowest possible concentration of our common ion. We want to have the lowest possible concentration of OH minus. So to do that, we need to make the pH go as low as possible. So what we should see with this is that as we decrease the pH, we're going to lower the concentration of OH minus. And then by lowering the concentration of the common ion, that should allow us to draw the reaction to the right because we have less of that OH minus pushing it back to the left. So our prediction here is that um, the acidic conditions should lead to um, more solubility. So now let's set this up with an ice table and uh, compute the answers at two different pHs. So um, in this case, our ice table is going to look like this. So we're going to have zero molar um, iron. Now at uh, pH 7, um, if you guys figure this out, if you convert this to a pOH and then convert that to a concentration of OH minus, uh, the concentration of OH minus at a pH of 7 is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. So now in this case, we're going to get um, plus X and plus 3X. So we're going to have X and 1 times 10 to the minus 7 plus 3X. So if we go over to the KSP expression, KSP is going to equal X times 1 times 10 to the minus 7th plus 3x. And then we can just, we can solve this, um, you could solve this for x using the quadratic. You would have to distribute this in, and then you would get a, a, a quadratic equation. But we don't have to do that, because we can do our approximation and say, is 1 times 10 to the minus 7th um, grade, d divided by 1 times, uh, oh, I'm sorry, divided by, what's the, I'm sorry, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 39, is that greater than 100? And the answer is yes. So what we can do is we can use our approximation to remove the 3x. So our approximation definitely works in this case. We take the 1 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by the KSP, and we, we get that. So in essence, what we get is that our KSP 2.5 times 10 to the minus 39 is equal to X times 1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. So if you solve that, X in this case is going to equal 2.5 times 10 to the minus 18th molar. And um, so this is going to be our molar solubility for the compound. It's also going to equal the concentration of iron 3 plus because uh, iron 3 plus is just X. So that's what happens when you have a common ion with a pH of 7. Now let's look at what happens as we lower the pH. We predict that this should increase the concentration. So our ice table in this case is going to be 0 molar. And in this case, we're going to get 1. Uh, if we do the math, if you convert this to a concentration of OH, you're going to get 1 times 10 to the minus 9th molar. Now, uh, you notice that the pH has gone up, so the concentration of the OH minus is going to go down. So we do plus X and plus 3X. We get X and 1 times 10 to the minus 9th plus 3X. So when we do our KSP expression over here, this is going to give us x times 1 times 10 to the minus 9th molar. So I've already, I've already removed the 3x because of the approximation. So now we're just going to solve for x. And in this case, the x in this common ion is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 12. So as you can see, going from a pH of 7 to a pH of um, 5, we increase our solubility by six orders of magnitude. So this thing is going up, this thing's solubility is going up dramatically just by changing the pH. We haven't changed anything else in the solution except for um, what is the con concentration of the hydroxide 
anion. So this is a great representation of how you can use common ion with pH to look at the solubility of a compound.